this is the GX30i VRT variable rate application solution for MagXL. And the way this product works and what it's designed for is for variable rate application so that uh, whether you have a high speed planner and you're obviously planning at different speeds and also if you're doing trying to do prescription based application where you need variable rate um, the VRT will basically allow you to do that. It'll shift between uh, orifice sizes uh, from one to two to three that way it allows you to get a variable rate and it'll help control the pressure. So a lot of times you're running you know, 20, 30 PSI, you either go from six miles an hour to 10 miles an hour or 10 gallons an acre to 40 gallons an acre and your pressure starts to skyrocket. Well, this will manage the pressure for you. It'll shift to allow you to, to uh, keep that pressure at a manageable uh, stage. That way you're not uh, creating too much pre uh, pressure and heat on your system and on your application and it keeps everything running nice and smooth. So we're basically using this with the Trimble uh, FM, one, FMX 1000. Uh, it'll, it'll integrate into pretty much any solution. Now I will note that um, it is independent of this controller. So whether this is a Green Star or a Trimble, Ag Leader, Raven, it doesn't matter. It works independently because it's managing the pressure in the system and so it doesn't have to integrate into this solution. So I'm going to turn on the controller, and you notice all the rows are floating. Right now I'm on my low side, so there's a low and there's a high side, so the low means that I'm running all the top valves here, and when my pressure exceeds 34, as I set it right here, then it'll basically shift to my larger side where I have a secondary orifice, and then once it reaches that again, it'll shift and open both, and I can set my preset my pressure here. So I have my low on 7 and my high on 34. Right now I'm running low. So what happens is right now I'm at 3 gallons to the acre, 4 miles an hour. I'm going to give a pretty simple example here. But as I start to increase my rate or my speed, you'll see my pressure go up. So I'll go a little faster here, 5 miles an hour, 6 miles an hour. See my pressure go up. So as soon as I hit 34 here, it shifts. Once it shifts, it goes to the high side. Now that it's on the high side, if I go, to go a little faster here, or, or even raise my target rate, I'll go a little faster, you'll see it hit on the pressure again. Once it hits, it'll shift to both. You can see the high side, so now they're both open. I'm running out of both valves, and I can still increase my rate, go higher. My pressure can go even higher, so I'm at 20. And then I can start to reduce it, so I have my low side set to 7 PSI. So if I start to lower my volume here, or my speed, either one. And if it falls below seven here, you see our pressure is dropping. There, it shifted back to the high side. If it shifts again, it'll go back to the low and then my pressure will raise. So no matter where I stand, it'll allow me to do that. So the nice thing about this is that since I'm, I am utilizing orifices, but I no longer have any kind of check valves in the line, I no longer have any kind of section valves in the line, so my startup time is quicker because I'm not having to fill three quarter inch holes for all the sections in the line, and I'm also not having to build any kind of pressure to open up a check valve. So I'll drop my rate just to show you here. I'm gonna drop my rate down to two gallons. You notice my pressure is dropping. It's down to eight PSI, yet my float is great. I'm gonna drop down my miles per hour even lower. You can see my pressure drop even lower down. Right now I'm at 4, 5 PSI and I'm still running. Drop my rate down to 1. 1 gallon an acre, I'm almost at 1 PSI. I'm still getting my flow. Everything's flowing correctly because I have nothing surging here because I don't have a check valve that I'm trying to open so I can get my rate. I'm literally down to 1 gallon an acre at 3 miles an hour. Uh, if I were to speed up here to 4, to 5, See my rate start to come up. I'm not struggling because there's no check valve there to open. I immediately go up. I can go up to six miles an hour, seven miles an hour, eight, nine. It's shifted already, 10. I'm at 10 miles an hour doing five gallons an acre. And it's all being managed there efficiently. Not a problem there at all. So I'm gonna slow this down, go down from 10 miles an hour. Nine, eight, seven, Six, five. I'm still at five gallons to the acre. Keeping my rate. 
If I were to drop my rate down to four, it falls below seven, it'll shift. You'll see that shift here. Now it's on my high side. If, if it goes below seven once again, it'll shift back to the low side. So let's see if I drop my rate down. You see it shift here. And the nice thing about it is if I didn't, for whatever reason, I didn't want to go below 10, I can definitely drop it down below 10. Uh, on my pressure side, if I wanted to bring it up a little higher, a little lower, I can raise it back up. Now I'm at 10 PSI, so if I drop below 10, it'll shift there on, at the 10. The GX30i BRT will allow you to do up to 32 different sections. Obviously, there's not a rate controller today that can do that. The Trimble can do up to 12. But this will allow you to section this off in a swap and up to 32 different sections. Now, it uses, uh, uh, on the protocol here, you notice that we have a harness on each one. So we have, it's utilizing the CAN bus to be able to assign an address to each one of these. And then it uses LIN bus, of course, the LIN bus protocol for the module to be able to uh, manage the each individual valve on there. So we're not having to take these uh, valves and then take it back to a harness. They daisy chain each other and then we use uh, CAN bus to, to basically assign an address to each one of them. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you how the sections on it work. So if I do a section test on this, it's going to go through and it's going to do the section test and show you how a swap would work on here. So the pressure is still being managed. If it falls below and or above your threshold, it's going to shift so that it'll allow you to basically manage your rate. And on top of that, so if we're going through the field doing swap control and it starts to shift, we're still going to manage the pressure so that you're going to get a, an efficient flow of liquid going through the system. And I'll let you watch the test here. But we're still able to achieve our rates based off of what's happening here in the system. Another feature here that I'll show you here is um, when we're setting this system up, if I go to settings, we can handle dual products as well. So if you're doing in furrow starter and maybe two by two, or you're doing strip tilling, two different rates at two different depths, we can set this up for dual products as well. It'll self address this and this controller will be able to manage two different products. So when you get to the home screen, it'll show product one and product two and it'll be doing the variable rate and pressure management of two different solutions. And then also it's, it's, it's allowing you to basically see where each one of these is going to be managed. So if I turn my sections back on, it'll show you down below which sections are off, on and which sections are off. So as it's going through the field and performing swap control, it's going to show you which sections are currently on or off. And again, this controller is working independently of the OEM controller. So whether it's Trimble Aggregator, John Deere, uh, it doesn't matter. We're not connected to the rate controller. We're doing this all independently. We're managing pressure uh, and flow efficiently without having to integrate into the controller. That's the Ag Excel GX30i BRT. If you have any additional questions, um, don't hesitate to give us a call, 877. 218-1981.